Nothing fancy. Part three of the Ruger Mini 14 series. I was talking about ergonomics, and now that I've had a second to talk, think about it, there's a couple other things I need to talk about along those lines. One is the battery of arms with a Mini 14. Of course, all these guns have been safety checked. I always do that. You guys know that by now. Um, let's talk about the safety. The safety on AR-15 is on, of course, the left-hand side of the gun. In the Mini 14 series, it's inside the trigger guard. And I'll be honest with you, I love it. I think it's very easy to use, very easy to manipulate, even with gloved hands. Very ergonomic. Here's your magazine release. And like I said, this is a 6.8 HPC, but a 2.2.3 mag, just for demonstration purposes, will snap in. When you put the magazine in a Mini 14, you actually have to rock it in. It does not go straight in like an AR-15 mag. You put it on the catch pin, rotate it back till it locks. To disengage the magazine, the way I do it is I'll use my shooting hand, boom, 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 I'm empty, come up, push this forward, rock the magazine out. I would say advantage AR-15 in that. The AR-15 is a lot easier to change magazines with, in my opinion, than a Mini 14. However, once you get used to it, it is pretty fast. The manipulation of the bolt versus an AR-15 is different. It's, it's actually the bolt itself will go back and forth. Uh, the charging handle on AR-15, of course, does not. Um, so that's a slight difference. This thing, when you're shooting, it's going back and forth just like that. That's why they have a ventilated barrel guard right here with a charging handle or a handle um, protective portion right here. That way you're not getting hit by it. Early Mini 14s did not have that. So as you were shooting, you could actually get, get your hand, I don't know, smacked around a bit. I've seen minis like that. Shot them too. I didn't really find it to be a problem. But now it's covered up. So you're going to have to get used to that. It charges differently and it does reciprocate. The bolt hold open device on a Mini 14 is right here. So we'll retract the bolt, hold it in the rearward position, press this down and release. Even without a magazine, we can do that. That's our bolt hold open device. Now, as you clean your Mini 14, you come down from the muzzle end, and that's another disadvantage of the Mini. You have to clean from the muzzle end, unless you know some trick I don't know about, but there's no way to do it from the rear end, unless you're, uh, I don't know, using like uh, just a cord or something, a pull through patch cord. You could do it that way. But with a rod, you're going to come in from the muzzle end. But as you hit this bolt, in my experience, careful it's going to release like that so yeah you can lock it back but at the slightest um, retract it's going to disengage the bolt hold open device and there it will come the bolt hold open by the way I like it it's very fast different battery of arms of course than the mini than the AR-15 and that the way I do is I'll just use the fat of my palm retract it and strip a new cartridge off pretty simple battery of arms and I would say that overall the mini 14 is extremely ergonomic that way I would give advantage AR-15 though in overall ergonomics, both for stock, um, manipulation of controls, and the magazine. But the Mini is not too far behind. Enough said about that. How about simplicity, ease of use, and field stripping? Well, the Mini is indeed simple. In fact, you can make a case that it's more simple than the AR-15 series. Um, however, the AR-15, uh, in my opinion, is a very simple gun as well. So I, I really can't give one advantage over another. The way you'll field strip, and I'm not going to do it, the way you'll field strip a mini is you'll get part of your cleaning rod here. You'll just pop this trigger guard off. The whole trigger group will come out, and then you can rotate the whole action out of the stock. It's actually pretty fast to do. Um, I just went over the battery of arms, too. You can see how simple it is overall. So simplicity... Maybe for some users, it's actually more simpler. I don't even know if that's right English. How about it is simpler than an AR-15? Because an AR-15 um, has a kind of a unique battery of arms. I just showed you the one in the Mini. It's just easy, easier to do at least. So enough said on simplicity. Accessories and versatility of the Mini 14. There is a lot to be said about here. And this will be a time I'm going to tell you about this Choke machine and tool stock. And here you can see the end of it. See, Choke Tool. Choke makes a lot of folding stocks. And I haven't checked their current offerings if they still have this stock. But this user has one put on. And I think, in my opinion, it's one of the best stocks for the Mini 14. It's light, it's fast, it's adequately strong. And then this user went ahead and mounted swivel studs in the side, like so. 
drill them in, then epoxy them. And these are locked in there pretty tight. And then he's got one in the aft portion as well. That way he has an easy way to carry the gun with a Black Hawk sling, kind of submachine gun style. Okay, and not a single point sling, so you could level some criticism of that, but it's still going to be pretty fast. I have used this sit setup just like this, and it does work pretty darn good. So there are different stocks available for the Mini 14. This Chote is just one example. Uh, I kind of misread that catalog in part two, but you saw that there's also the Hogue rubber overmolded stock, which they put on their target rifle, like I mentioned. That's another option for you. I generally don't care for that stock too much. I don't like my gun covered in rubber. I just don't. Remember I was telling you about the recoil pad in part two and how that rubber recoil pad can grab on clothing? The same thing can happen with your... This rubber is just very catchy on clothing. And I don't like it. And a over-molded stock with rubber does exactly the same thing. It catches on clothing, like, a lot. So... It, personal preference, just a data point for me, but I don't prefer it. Uh, so different stocks, I already told you about that Butler Creek stock. Now, if you do come across an older Mini 14 like you're seeing here in the foreground, the circa 1990s one, I'm not sure what year this one was made, you can see this user has aftermarket sights on it. And that is another improvement by Ruger, and I think it's a big improvement. The newer Mini 14s have the hooded ghost ring peep sights on it, which work pretty darn good. And they're a lot stronger and a lot better than the older versions. Nice peep size. And they actually work. So I like that. And then you see the front has protective ears on the wings. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. This user put on a Williams peep sight on the older Mini 14. And I don't think that setup is very strong. It's definitely not going to be as strong as the newer Mini 14 in the background. But it's the Williams peep sight. If you don't know Williams, they're a company that makes uh, all kinds of accessories for guns, specializing in sights and I think mounts for optics and stuff, but mostly sights, iron sights. This is a very finely adjustable, as you can see, up, down, can adjust it side to side, and you can also interchange your peeps out if you need to. So I guess in a way, the older Mini 14 has more versatility because you can put different sights on it. And then it has the unprotected single blade on the front. And there are some criticisms leveled against how they installed that blade, um, thinking that it actually induced some barrel stresses to the old Mini 14s, and that's one reason why, the, why they were inaccurate. And that might be something to think about. However, back to accessories, one thing you can do with an older Mini 14 you cannot do with a new Mini 14, at least as of 2008, that's put a flash suppressor on it. Because they make flash suppressors, Choke Machine and Tool being one of them. Uh, there's some other manufacturers as well. They just make a slip-over flash suppressor that you can put on the Mini 14. Then you can secure it with like a set screw. Make sure you put that set screw like really tight on there and use some uh, pretty much permanent Loctite on it. Otherwise, it's going to come flying off. Personal experience, by the way. The newer Mini 14, I don't know of any flash suppressor that's been made. For that, because you can see that 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 those protective ears pretty much negate the you know the possibility of you slipping over a flash suppressor. That's a downside. Now, some guys say, I don't really give a crap about flash suppressors. Well, for a Mini 14, honestly, I don't either. I think it's just adding extra weight. However, if you are a sheepdog and using your tactical carbine in this situation, a Mini 14 to defend your family, friends, place of business, like in the Rodney King riots. Um, there's a lot to be said for making your gun looking intimidating. If we can get away without shooting any shots at all, isn't that a lot better? I say it is. A lot better. So I prefer to have my gun look pretty mean in that situation. That way guys would go, you know what, let's go to the next shop down the street. This guy, um, he looks like he means business. So just a thought. Um, talked about the side options there. We pretty much discussed the magazines and the fire part firepower section. How about triggers? There are some triggers available for the Mini 14 and there are some reputable gunsmiths. Don't ask me who they are because I don't know, but I know they're out there because I've had friends use them to have trigger jobs done. So the trigger as it comes from the factory I think is okay. It's decent, but you can improve it and you know if you want to spend the money for that, go for it. 
So overall, I'm going to say that the accessory department in the Mini 14 is good. Actually, I'll call it very good. The AR-15 of series, of course, beats it. It totally blows away the kel SC SU-16 series in accessories just because a kel is is such a different design. And it's just not that predominant out there yet. Um, you know a gun is successful, though, like the Mini, when Cabela's devotes pretty much a whole page to it, like I mentioned earlier. Um, there's a lot of Minis out there, and for the reasons I've said. Versatility, that's the other side of it, is how versatile is a Mini 14? Well, if you put a folding stock on it, it's going to be a shorter carry option for you. Put this in here, just as usual. Um, so I would say highly versatile. You can use it as a varmint gun, defensive gun, on and on. Enough said about that. How about price? Well, here's where it generally is going to beat an AR-15. A Mini-14 is, and again, I hate to say prices because they vary so much state to state. Sorry, my viewers in Australia and Europe, I feel so bad. I wish you guys could have these too. It sucks. Americans, listen up. Don't let this happen to us because my viewers down there can't have guns like this because of their politics. It's a sad situation. But back to price, around $600, I'm going to say. And in a lot of cases, that's going to be probably around $400 less than an AR-15. Now, remember, uh, it is a high-value option. It's very reliable. But remember the downsides to it as well. And this is going to get into track record of the Mini-14. Um, and again, my trigger time has been on the older Mini-14. I don't have trigger time on the newer Mini-14 yet. But I have researched it, and I have friends who have shot it, and they've pretty much told me that 30 MOA is going to hold true. About three inches at 100 yards is what the gun's capable of with fairly decent ammo. Might get a little bit better with really good ammo, but honestly, most guys are not going to be shooting match ammo through their Mini-14. They're going to be shooting military surplus, whatever they can get for a good deal. Um, that's just the way it generally goes. So the track record on the Mini is very good. The reason it's still around in 2008 after decades and decades of being sold by Ruger is because it's so popular, and it's such... Uh, an affordable 223 carbine and it just works. The, the track record is excellent. It is very reliable. It's very durable as I've mentioned but let's not forget the downsides of the Mini 14 and we have to keep those in mind when we're looking against other options and those downsides in my opinion include the lack of absolute accuracy. Um, I think it's a sucky optics platform truth be told. Even though it comes with scopes, we do not have a Picatinny rail on the top. You can buy those. However, it's going to add weight, it's going to add complexity, and it's also going to rise your platform up. And I've seen the Picatinny rails for the Mini 14, and they all add at least a half an inch. So that ruins your cheek weld. Okay? We want to keep our optics as low as possible, in my opinion. So our cheek weld is very consistent when we bring the gun to bear. So I think the Mini 14 as an optics platform blows. It just sucks. Even if you do mount a scope here, you only have two mounting points and so your optic is very limited of how far forward and how far or how far back and how far forward that it can actually move. Keep that in mind. Um, the magazines are made of steel, generally speaking, unless you get the polymers, um, the thermals, and they're going to be more expensive. They're going to be heavier to carry. Um, it's not quite as versatile as far as configuring uh, as an AR-15. In other words, let's say you want to mount a light to your Mini. How do you do that? Well, it's totally doable. You can take a section of tactical rail, Ergo Grip, the company makes sections of aluminum rail that you could screw into your stock right here and then you could clip your light onto it. Easy enough to do. Um, but it's not as versatile as, as uh, AR-15. That's just the way it is. So keep that in mind. Couple disadvantages of the Mini-14. Mostly advantages, but there are a couple. So that's price, track record. We covered most of it. I'm sure I forgot like a lot. I think the Mini 14 remains, even as of 2008, maybe even 2009, in the years that follow, a very smart alternative to the AR-15. If you can deal with its accuracy, which I'll be honest with you, most users probably won't notice. And if you use this for you know, law enforcement, if you're a police officer, or even a civilian sheepdog, maybe when the rule of law goes bye-bye and you need a defensive carbine, 
I think the Mini-14 will fill the bill quite well. In fact, it's a gun that those bad guys used against FBI agents in 1986. And honestly, they wreaked havoc with the Mini-14 against those guys. So, um, And I even hate to bring that example up because it was the bad guys using it. But objectively, we have to look at the gun. Most of your engagements will probably be within 50 yards. Within 50 yards, um, the Mini-14 is going to hold its own. No doubt. And it's cost effective. So think about it. There's some other options out there. Maybe the Keltec SU-16, particularly the Charlie model, the short one. You'll see my series coming on that. But the Mini-14 should rank very high on your list indeed. This is Nothing Fancy. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the good ratings, the subscriptions. I'll be making more gun videos, keeping them real for you. Take care. See you later. Enjoy.